Hi, welcome back to Chitoku Tech. I had a lot of fun working with Bookworm on Raspberry Pi 5 and Raspberry Pi 4. Yeah, Bookworm is Debian 12 OS for Raspberry Pi. And then I realized, oh yeah, I just bought the uh, Libre Computer Sweet Potato. It's the version 2 of Le Potato. So let's go ahead and install Debian 12 Bookworm. This is with the GNOME desktop on it on Le Potato and Sweet Potato and run them through the same tests and compare it with the Raspberry Pi 4. How does that sound? Yeah, look for the link down below for the new version 2 Sweet Potato. Only $30 and they're available. So if you're having a hard time getting a hold of Raspberry Pi, this might fit your needs. Their focus is primarily video playback and 3D graphics. So that's the enhanced functionality for the lay potato and the sweet potato. They both uh, are optimized for 4K video. All right, so here's an article on Libre Computer's hub site, and they've got, <laughs> they, they, I was surprised they had Debian 12 ready to go. They're keeping up with the images uh, very timely. Yeah, so if you go to Libre Computer Downloads, you can hit the Debian option, and here's Debian 12. So you're looking for AML S905XCC, that's the late potato and sweet potato. The base image obviously is the headless, whereas the GNOME image has a desktop. We're going to go ahead and download that. In the meantime, let's unbox the sweet potato. Yeah, that was the old box, the version 1 box. This is the version 2 sweet potato box there. Get them side by side for comparison. These are both 2 gigabyte memory units. All right, it's well protected in that plastic shield there. Hey, it comes with the heat sink already. That's nice. You see those five pins behind the Ethernet port? That's actually an additional USB riser on top of the four USB ports in the front. So you could put it in a case and you could add a Wi-Fi or uh, Bluetooth inside the case. This is the lay potato and it has an audio port and a micro USB port for power. And here we see sweet potato. Well, the audio port's gone, so audio's going to go through HDMI. And they've gone to USB-C, which is a big improvement in my mind. And I like the color-coded GPIO pins there. We're going to use the exact same uh, TF card that we used with the Raspberry Pi 4 and Raspberry Pi 5 video. Here in Raspberry Pi Imager, we want to go ahead and choose that ARM64 AML S905XCC image with GNOME desktop. So we use custom image, browse to where we downloaded it, and of course choose the TF card for storage. We'll go ahead and write that, and of course I'll just crop all this out. No sense watching that go by. Oh yeah, yeah, I'm not going to apply OS customization settings. I don't know if it would work or not, to be honest with you. There we go. All right, rate my setup. I got a USB keyboard and mouse attached. Got this portable OLED display. And back in the background there, you see the AGP tech. I use that for recording the screenshots from the uh, device. So here we are on the sweet potato going through setup, English language, English keyboard, uh, location services, uh, time zone. I'm going to go ahead and type Phoenix in here. There we go, close enough. And that's Mountain Standard Time all year round because we don't observe daylight savings. I'm going to skip adding an account, but I want to go ahead and add my first user account named Shotoku Tech. There we go. I didn't need parental controls. Let's set a password. Okay, yeah, that, I just wanted to give you a feel for what setup looked like. Now we're going to go sudo apt get update. And that requires my password. 
and now we'll run sudo apt-get upgrade to apply those updates. And the answer is yes. Yeah, I noticed the top bar of terminal said Debian 11, and I'm like, is, is it Debian 11 or Debian 12? But if you run LSB underbar release with the minus A parameter, you can see it is Debian 12 bookworm. I've already installed Sysbench on the sweet potato here, so we're going to run that CPU test just like we did with the Raspberry Pi 4 and 5. Make sure to check out that video. It was kind of interesting. These results look about half as fast as the Raspberry Pi 4. It's not really a fair comparison. I just didn't have any Raspberry Pi 3s. They're all in service. They're either, uh, I think one of them's my storage server, uh, one of them's my home assistant, and I have three of them running uh, 3D printers. Okay, so for the I.O. test, for writing two gigabytes of files to the TF card, I'm actually not speeding this up. I'm not going to crop anything out because I want you to see just how fast it is. And with that in mind, how long it took with the Raspberry Pi 4 and even the Raspberry Pi 5. See, here you are. We're coming up to, wow, just 24 seconds was all it took to write the two gigabytes for the TF card. And that was 84 megabits per second. We'll get to see that comparison in the charts when we get done. And then we'll do the memory test. Okay, we got the memory test, the I.O. test, and the CPU test. Yeah, like I say, 2,700 events in the 10-second test. This was the real standout. Only 24 seconds to write that 2 gigabytes of files to the TF card. And I don't really remember what the memory numbers looked like for the Raspberry Pi 4 and 5. Okay, we're on Le Potato now. We're going to run the same tests. I was actually kind of expecting the Sweet Potato to show some clear advantage over Le Potato. I think, you know, some of the physical modifications on the Sweet Potato and the fact that it's selling at only $30 is, is a pretty good improvement in and of itself. Yeah, you see there the... CPU test is pretty close, 275 against 277. Here goes the I.O. test, writing that 2 gigabytes of files. And again, not cropping or compressing here. We're going to just talk right through it because you see how fast it's going. It was painfully slow on the Raspberry Pi 4 and Raspberry Pi 5. Here we go. Coming around to 100. Just got to make it to 128. There we go, the test finished, and that was even faster, 21 seconds, 95 megabits per second. <laughs> so, Lay Potato actually beat Sweet Potato on that test. And that was the same memory card. I'd write the image, do the tests on one board, write the image, do the test on the other board. Okay, let's do the memory test. Okay, we'll get this lined up to where you can see them all together here. And of course, I've already worked this out into the charts with uh, the Raspberry Pi 4 in the charts for comparison. So let's go ahead and move on to the charts now. Yeah, here we go. CPU. Yeah, the sweet potato and lay potato, about half as fast as the Raspberry Pi 4. Again, even, you know, if you look at the price comparison, it's about half. So it seems to be a fair comparison. It's not as fast as the Raspberry Pi 4, but sweet potato and late potato are about half as fast. Uh, this was an interesting aberration here, this latency max of 11.99 uh, compared to the 6 and the 3.5. It did drive that uh, latency 95th percentile a little bit above your average. Uh, the total time, of the test itself is 10 seconds long. Yeah, and you see these latency values are about double latency minimum, and they're equally distributed between the sweet potato and the potato. Same thing for average latency, about the same numbers. But yeah, we have that one aberration, that latency max at 11.99. And we can compare that latency against Raspberry Pi 4. All right, here's memory. Memory is not quite... 
it's a little bit more than a third slower than the Raspberry Pi 4, or the Raspberry Pi 4 is a, a, a third fast, a little bit more than a third faster than the sweet potato and the late potato in terms of memory, writing that two gigabytes of memory. I wonder if just having only two gigabytes of memory hinders them in that test, whereas the Raspberry Pi 4 had four gigs of memory. Uh, there was some aberration in the Raspberry Pi test where it had that uh, latency max of 0.5, where the other latency max for sweet potato and late potato are in the hundreds. And here's where sweet potato and late potato really stand out. Uh, 24 seconds to write the 2 gigabytes of the TF card, 21 seconds for late potato, and Raspberry Pi 4 took 135 seconds to write that 2 gigabytes of data to the same TF card. There you see megabits per second, 84, 95 against 15. <laughs> I, was, I was caught off guard by this one. It was really shocking. So if you have a uh, write intensive uh, operation, uh, lay potato or sweet potato might be beneficial to you over Raspberry Pi 5, Raspberry Pi 4. If you have some software that's writing to the card repeatedly, it could speed things up for you. And again, megabits per second, 84, 95 against the 15 for the Raspberry Pi 4. I was really surprised about that. Okay, look for the links down below for the sweet potato. Again, $30. They're available. <laughs> Already comes with the heat sink. Yeah, I like the color-coded GPIO pins. I'm sure there's other functional improvements on the sweet potato. just can't recall them all off the top of my head, so give this video a like. Leave a comment down below, and before you go watch more of my lay potato and sweet potato videos, please click on subscribe. Thank you very much.